Improv Tipsters, Paul Valancourt here, back with another Improv Tip. But before we get started, I have two quick requests. One, if you've been watching the videos for a while and you are getting some value out of them and you're enjoying them, please uh, pass it on to your friends. Let them know um, that, uh, from other improv groups or people in your improv group or just strangers on the street, whoever. If you've enjoyed the, the, uh, the videos, please tell them. I'd love to get the word out as much as I can. And secondly, if you've been watching the videos and enjoying them and you're, uh, you know, it's September or almost September, we're back to school now. If you're thinking about buying a book about improv this year, please consider The Triangle of the Scene, the book that I wrote about improv. Uh, the link is ding ding in the description down below. Um, it sort of lays out basically my whole philosophy that I use when I'm teaching or coaching with teams. And uh, it also has links to videos illustrating uh, and demonstrating the exercises. Okay, but now on to today's tip. I'm actually answering a question for one of the viewers at home, um, and his question is basically: uh, I have I, I work with someone who always starts off every scene weird. Someone who always starts off every scene weird. Well, so, and I thought this was a really interesting question because I think this comes up from time to time when you've been working in a group for a little while, or or even when you're sort of like you know just sort of starting to get into it. You notice different habits or different things about people that maybe don't jive with you or, or your way of playing. So how do we deal with that? Well, let's start with this one about playing weird, right? Um, first of all. I, I kind of wonder what does that, what does weird mean? I'm imagining that it means like they come on, come in with like some big choice, some wacky choice of like being an alien or some crazy thing or oh, I'm a cactus or I'm a robot or a bionic or made of rubber, whatever it is. Something that's not necessarily character based, but something that's sort of a little more premise based. I, I, I'm guessing that that's what that means by weird. So I guess my question that I have to wonder when I'm thinking about that is why? Why are they starting off every scene weird? And there's usually, I think, a couple of answers. One, people start off scenes weird because they're nervous. They're nervous and they're just like full of nervous energy and they come out and they're just like bang, boom, some big explosive choice right off the right off the gate that sort of gets them out there and sort of burns off some of that energy. That's That happens all the time. I've done that and I think a lot of people do that it, where you sort of like have that energy and you burn off with that big choice. And maybe it's not the most thought out or maybe it's not the most uh, you know complex or, or sophisticated choice, but that's the one that gets you out and gets you involved and gets you in the mix, which is kind of really where you want to be. Two, maybe they are... Um, maybe that's all they've got. Maybe they're at the point of their training where that's the tool that they've got is big choices, weird choices, wacky choices, outrageousness. Maybe that's the only tool that they've got and so they use that tool all the time. There's an old saying that when the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. So if that if that's the only tool you have, then every scene you think, oh, I need a big choice to start this off, which maybe yes, maybe no, but um, but that's definitely one possible explanation. Um, another one, is that uh, is that maybe they're going for the laugh. A lot of times when people um, are starting off with these big wacky things, they're sort of desperate for that first laugh to like, ah, just settle them. Okay, I got my first laugh and now we're going. Again, you know, that, that, that happens from time to time. Uh, I think we all sort of know by now that going for the laugh is not really the way to go, but under the gun, in the fog of war, under the, the, the fire and the, the excitement of a show, we don't always necessarily uh, aspire to our best selves. We sort of do kind of, we snap into, we're sort of freaked out, or we snap into survival mode, we play the big cards that we've got. And sometimes it's this, this kind of thing. But as we're considering this, I think basically consider, unless that person is like deliberately denying you or deliberately trying to get the scene off track, I talked a little bit about that, ding, ding, in this video here, unless they're doing those things, I imagine that they're doing their best. They're doing their best. They're just trying to trying to make it happen, man, the best way that they know how. So we need to sort of come come at the problem or the question with compassion, right? I assume that they're doing their best. I'm gonna do my best. How do we work all this out? So step one of like how do I deal with my with my partner who always starts off weird is I would say step one is talk to your coach. You know, this is one of the great things about having a coach. They're the third eye, the the supposedly. Um, you know, impartial one who's going to look at what's going on and be able to sort of shape the experience of the of, of the players, right? So ideally, the coach would have something to help you, either something maybe that you can work on, or maybe something that other person could work on, or maybe just find a way to uh, to work the the problem out. This is one of the great things about about having a coach. And then I think the second thing I would think about is is are you the only one that's having this problem or this concern? Are other people saying, man, this 
a person X, Y, Z always comes out, always is this big, crazy, wacky thing. Oh my God. And it's like a team wide concern. I think that's important to know too, because if it's just you, then maybe it's just your problem right? If it's just you, maybe it's just your problem. Chris Tallman, ding, ding, in this video here talks about that idea. There's always a Dave. And, and one of the things that he talks about is sometimes you just got to let it go. You just got to let it go. And then if you can't let it go, then maybe you need to move on to a, to a new team, especially if it's only just your problem. Okay, because ultimately improv should be fun. You shouldn't stay on teams you're not having fun with, that you don't gel with, because it's just life's too short for that, man. I mean, looking back, life's too short for that. You know, um, so, so, but let's say that you're on this team and let's say that you're in this scene and, and let's say that your partner starts off crazy. And this, and this is also, I think, helpful if we're going to pick up shows where we're dealing with, uh, students and other players of all different experiences, all different schools of thought, all different experience levels. And, and we're, we come into a scene with someone and they start off gigantic and weird and crazy. What do we do? Well, I'm a big believer that you can't change someone else. So you need to think of a strategy for you. What are you going to do? How are you going to respond to that? And I'm here to help you. Okay. The first thing is, I think that you can just match. If they come in super big and crazy and they're a meat morph from Zor Zorbulon, then you know what? You be a meat morph from Zorbulon and you meet on that common ground. Because ultimately, it is more important that you get on the same page than you get on your page. It is more important that you get on the same page than that you get on your page. Right. So when I'm in a, when I'm in a scene with someone and they're a meat morph from Zorblon, I'm not trying to convince them to come over here and be Dan from accounting. I'm going to go with them. I'm going to match them, especially if they if they've made this big uh, this big statement. Right. Then it seems like well they're they're in into this thing. Right. So that I, it's I, I have another saying that I use all the time, which is it's up to the person who knows better to match. It's up to the person who knows better to match. I know that they've made this big choice. I know that they're down that road. So it's up to me to match because I'm not going to convince them to match me. They've already made this big choice. They're not going to backtrack on it and they're not going to match me. So it's up to me to match them somehow. And so just mirroring them and sort of doing what they're doing is a, is a good way to do that. Okay. Second thing you can do is, uh, it, is that you can mirror them or, or you can just roll with it and you can yes and it and justify it and sort of put some, um, a lot of times what people's concerned about, about these big wacky choices is that it's sort of like built uh, above, above, uh, it doesn't have any foundation under it, right? So if you're gonna, if you don't want to be a meat board from Zorblon, but you still want to play in this scene, then you got to roll with it. One of our great jobs as being an improviser is justifying. Right. So I need to justify this and put some foundation under that person's big choice. And if I do that, then that gets me into it because I have some relationship to that other character. I have some relation to what's going on in the scene and I'm, I'm building the grounding. I'm building that that foundation under it. And that helps the scene, even though it starts off with a big, gigantic choice, be more grounded, right? So let's talk about grounded because the, the part of the question uh, that the person wrote in was that this person always starts off with a, starts off crazy, but I like to play in a more grounded way. So what does grounded mean? Well, a lot of times I think when we think of grounded, we think of pedestrian or workaday or sort of quote unquote normal, right? But I don't think that's really what, what grounded is because you could have two, you have a grounded scene between two aliens or two forks in a drawer or two cactuses or two astronauts or whatever. It could be grounded if it is about relationship. And I'll, I always come back to the same point. The scene is always about what's happening between those two people or things or whatever in the moment as we watch. How are they relating to each other? How are they working out the relationship as we watch, right? So if your partner starts off with this big crazy thing, a lot of times what's hard about that is that they're not investing into the relationship right away. So what you can do on your side of the equation is you can invest in the relationship. And a lot of times that will pull them into the relationship. That will pull them into a more grounded scene. My, my partner is a meat morp from Zorblon. They're a crazy alien. And then I have a feeling about them, right? And I, I just tell them, hey, you know what, meat morp? You're too needy. I got I to gotta break it off. I know we've been meeting out here in the desert and you've been probing me or whatever, but... It's just not working out anymore. Now, suddenly, this meat morph from Zorblon is on the receiving end of a breakup, 
right? That's a very grounded thing. It's a very human thing. A human in the audience can relate to that. A meat morp can relate to meat morps, but a human can relate to the idea of breaking up or being broken up with, right? And suddenly you've taken this big crazy idea and you've made a grounded scene out of it right? Because you're bringing it back to relationship. And you're probably going to be able to pull that other person into that grounded scene because you're going to set up that, that that foundation and they're just going to fall into it. Because ultimately, they're playing meat more from Zorblad, but they're a person. And they're going to have some point of reference for that sort of personal experience, right? And how do we do that? We do that by giving big playable gifts. I talk about that ding ding in this uh, video here. Um, but I think that's really it, man. I think ultimately, it, the, I'll say this. I think the problem is really boils down to when someone makes this big, crazy choice, they're usually not uh, in the relationship. And that makes it hard to play the scene if you're not playing the relationship. And the biggest, uh, biggest fix for that is for you to double down on the relationship and pull them in, help them discover their character. And you'll discover your character through that, through that same process. Okay, so uh, that's really the tip for today. I think I, I've sort of really tried to break it down piece by piece because I think it's a really complex question. This can be a lot of different things. Oh, my partner always plays cops or my partner always plays high status or my partner always whatever. There's a lot of things, a lot of habits that once you've been playing on a team for a while, that you notice about other people. I think it all sort of, uh, sort of funnels back through the things we've talked about today, okay? So in the comments down below, tell me, how do you deal with someone who comes in with a big, crazy choice or has a habit that they always, oh, I know if I'm in the scene with that guy or that girl, they're always going to start this way, right? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's get a little conversation going. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Hey friends, thanks for checking out the video. And uh, if you wanna hear a little bit more, check out one of these two quality videos. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links are in the description down below. And let me know what you would like to see an improv tip about. Thanks for watching.